Hello everyone. We are going to paint tonight and um, I am going to talk to you a little bit about the past and we're going to look at some things that I've done with the creative community in the past. This is also the last Q&A time for my free workshop that has been going on this week. And um, this is your time to ask me any questions that you may have. So let me see if I can get this all set up the way I want to first. So let me know where you're watching from and say hello in the comments if you don't mind. I am going to make sure that I am live in all the places that I need to be live and give me just a sec. Okay. Now, we are going to paint some cotton tonight. Um, for those of you who have been following me for a while, <clears throat> you know that I have, I've been on Facebook. I've had an Etsy store. I've done some art and sold it for about 10 years now. But for the last six years, I have had a group called the creative community and i've painted something with them each month most of the time on a weekly basis and this this month makes our six year anniversary so six years ago i started my creative community in september and the very first tutorial that we did was me painting cotton so to celebrate, I'm going to do several things tonight, but to celebrate those six years, we are going to have a painting session and I am going to repaint cotton in my new way of painting, um, my current style. And over the past six years, I've learned a lot of things too. So if you are here and you can hear and see everything okay, say hello and let me know. Okay, I see Norma and Kim are saying hello, so that is great. And I hope you can hear me okay and everything seems to be working. Okay. Um, and let me jump back over here. Hang on just a second. I want to make sure that you guys can see me in the More Than Paint workshop. Yes, I can see myself over there. So, <laughs> um so right now I'm live on both. I know that I'm live on both my, my main page, my little Bluebird Gallery page, and I'm also live inside the free workshop group that we have been learning in all week. So I just wanted to do this publicly, but I'm in both places. So you can join me in either place and that will be just fine. Hi Norma, hi Sherry. Okay, so a few things. This is going to be a live session. I don't know how long we're going to be here, but I'm going to paint. I'm going to move my camera over this way in just a minute, and I'm going to paint some cotton <clears throat> in the way that I paint now. But I wanted to tell you that if you wanted to see that very first tutorial, if you are a creative community member, you can go into the library and go into monthly in, well, it's in the painting library, not the business library. If you go under um, the painting library and then choose the topic of monthly tutorials, you'll have to scroll all the way down to the bottom and it's going to be down there at the bottom. But I did paint, I watched it again today just to see what it was about. Because it's been six years and I don't really remember a lot. But um, <laughs> I used my palette knife, which I used this one, my favorite one. That was when I was heavily into palette knife painting. Lots of texture. Um, and I had just started using the 
heavy bodied acrylics. So in the video, I am showing you the difference between using something like a craft paint and a heavy bodied acrylic paint while using a palette knife. And that was kind of what the whole tutorial was about. I'm gonna use my palette knife a little bit tonight, but I'm not gonna use it exclusively like I did in the one before. But um, before we start painting, there was at least one question that I did not get to answer in our last Q&A session. And um, there have been some other questions that were asked in the Facebook group for the free workshop. So I'm gonna go over those, but also I wanted to show you this. So people ask me all the time what my favorite paint brushes are and what my favorite palette knife is. So I have a pack of my favorite brushes and I have one of my favorite palette knives and I'm going to give one of these this whole set one of these and one of these to one of you so to celebrate tonight we're gonna have this that I'm going to gift someone and to get I'm trying to say this the right way without it <laughs> triggering something on my Facebook page but I'm going to gift this to one of you who sprinkles this video out to your friends Do you guys know what that means <laughs> so i'm just going to randomly choose someone who has sprinkled this video out into facebook land okay <laughs> so that's part of our celebration tonight and we're going to paint the, the um i started to say flowers the cotton and i'm going to answer any questions that you guys may have while you're here one no two questions that I did not get to um, in our last session or that have been asked in the meantime were number one how do I keep my studio so clean and if you had seen me a couple of hours ago you would not have asked that question <laughs> because my studio is not always clean but a tip I guess that I could give you would be to clean up after yourself so after you have finished working if you just you turn on some music or something and just clean up after yourself then when you come back in the next time you're gonna feel more uh, inspired to create something because you're not gonna be starting from chaos and I know that that doesn't work very well for me so um, clutter and chaos and just a lot of stuff everywhere kind of stifles my creativity so I try even if I'm um, Sometimes I'll just leave like I'll just get through painting and I have I have to just get out of here For whatever reason and if that happens I will come in and I will clean up before I get started and that's what I had to do tonight was I had to straighten up everything clean up everything move stuff around and That's just the way that it that it is when you're creative. You're gonna make messes um, the other question was about framing and someone had asked what I recommended as far as resources for affordable frames and <coughs> my best um, advice would be look at thrift stores because you can find some really great frames here's an example let me grab this this is a really nice frame I got it for $8.99 it's really big I can just take the artwork out of it and reframe whatever I want to frame. So, thrift stores are great for finding frames. You can also redo the frame if you don't like it. Um, you can paint it. You can add it as part of the artwork. You can make your, your painting go out onto the frame if you wanted to. There are so many options for that. I love finding things at thrift stores and redoing them and making them usable again. So you don't have to get something brand new for your framing. It, I know it is expensive. So that's my word of advice on that. So if you missed the beginning of the video, I am gifting my favorite 
brush set and my favorite palette knife in celebration of my six year anniversary with my creative community if you sprinkle the video to all your friends and I will just randomly choose someone. Um, you're probably going to need to come back here and tell me that you did it because if you don't, I'm not sure that I'm going to know how to get in touch with you. So I haven't done anything like this in a long time. Um, so let's see. Uh, Kim says she d agrees and she finds great things at thrift, so thrift shops and so do I. Um, Robin said she found some beside of the road. So you can find frames anywhere. <laughs> um, they don't have to be brand new. Okay. So let's get started painting. So I said the first tutorial that I did was cotton and it was done completely with a palette knife. But this one we're going to do tonight is not. I'm going to use brushes and I'm going to use my easel. And if you if you go and watch the original if you're a creative community member and you can get into the library and see it, I had everything flat on my table. And so I'm going to use this easel this time and I'm going to start with Indian yellow. I don't have a real solid plan for this. So we're just gonna go, Kim, that is yes. That's what sprinkle means. But word on the street is <laughs> that if you say that word in a video that for some reason Facebook will penalize you for some reason, I don't know. I don't even know if that's true. I can't get my white paint open, hang on. But just for the sake of making sure that that doesn't happen, I'm just going to say that. Okay. I'm going to start with Indian Yellow. And I'm just going to make, I think, I'm just going to make like some... Some pieces of cotton that are not, they're not going to be in a container. They're just going to kind of live here. But, um, we're going to do them in odd numbers. One, two, three, four, five. Let's do seven. And you guys know that over the years, things change. The way that I paint has changed. Um, my style of, of just creating things in general. And I really like more of a vintage, dark background. Um, a lot of my paintings have a dark, dark background. So I'm going to go with just... We're just going to pick up some black and do this. Also, I was going to ask you guys, someone said that they were having trouble getting the free download that was a part of the videos that we released yesterday in the free workshop so if that has been a problem for you guys please let me know and i'll do my best to fix that i don't know if that was just a problem for just one person or if um if i did something wrong with with setting it up i'm not sure so it works for me but you guys let me know if it's not working for you and i will definitely fix it it was a a printable PDF of some positive affirmations and some scriptures about creativity that you can print out and hang up in your studio or just have them somewhere nearby so that you when you get in a, 
a bad mindset, you can just read over those really quickly and help yourself to get out of that. Okay, so the, in the original video that I did six years ago, I'm pretty sure that I used just brown, gray, and white. And I think I used something called um, bronze yellow. But we're going to use a lot of color tonight. We're not going to just use brown and white, <laughs> even though those are some colors that are going to be in what, what we would call the like the the stems and things like that but even though we're painting something white there's always color in there that you may not you may not know to put if you don't practice it okay so like I said I don't have a plan for this but um, Jane said she had problems with downloading it. So if anyone else had problems downloading that, please let me know. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make some areas where my stems are going to be. And... I don't want them to be like straight up and down. That'll give me something to go with. I have to lift this up a little bit. And I don't want it to just be right there in the center, so I'm going to make some more some more marks that could be some stems or or whatever okay let's see what you guys are saying here um, I wish I could see comments better than I can. But if you do have questions, this technically is supposed to be our last question and answer time in this workshop that we're doing. So if you do have questions, I don't mind you asking them while I'm painting. I just may not be able to answer them at the moment, but I'm just gonna keep painting and I'll come back and answer questions um, if possible. So. All right, so I started with the Indian yellow, and the next thing I'm going to add is, it's going to seem weird, but I'm going to go in with some blue and some red. So this is manganese blue and quinacridone red, which may be stopped up. Hang on. I think I can get some out. There we go. Okay, and I'm going to switch to my Filbert brush. So, when I first started painting, I used to just use gray for shadows because that's what you think, right? You grass is green, the sky's blue, and shadows should be gray. But I've learned that 
that's not necessarily the case. Shadows can have reflections of color um, depending on what you're painting and they can be purple or blue and so we're gonna do some shadows in our cotton first and I may come back and put some more in there afterwards too So I'd love to know how many of you have been around the whole time that I've been on Facebook or possibly been in my creative community in the past or are currently a member. some spots that look like it could be something back in the background but it's not very clear Patricia asked, do I use Mars black or ivory black? I use Mars black. All right, next I am going to use some burnt sienna, which is a rusty red brown, which I love. with some white. And I think I'm going to use that for my stem color this time. have a hundred percent I don't have a plan for this I'm just going with it and we're gonna see what happens Kellen says she's been a member for the past two years Alice said since COVID Jennifer says she's a new member Let's see I'm gonna to try to tap on this and see if it will let me see more comments Okay, that's much better. Um, Donna says hello from California. Okay, I just saw a question and then I lost it. Hang on. How long did it take you to paint without a reference photo, Kellen says. Um, well, it depends on what I'm painting. If I'm not painting something that's familiar to me, I still use a reference photo. Um, but things like cotton, roses, um, hydrangeas, certain flowers, portraits. Like, I kind of make up the faces that I paint at this point. <laughs> um, it's taken me several years, but... Another thing that happens is I kind of I kind of go through little spurts like I'll paint a lot of portraits and I'll get used to that and then I'll switch to a different subject and I kind of have to relearn how to do that. Um so 
I'm not always I'm not always great at remembering how to do things that I haven't done in a while. Like remembering how cotton looks is not not something that everybody everyone may not know exactly what cotton looks like so looking up reference photo there's nothing wrong with using reference photos um, let's see Ashley say currently a member and I absolutely love it I think I joined in the summer of 2021 I just signed up for the lifetime membership today so Amanda can't ever be rid of me now <laughs> I appreciate that very much Ashley I'm glad you're here um, two-year member Norma says uh, Kellen said I would have had to look at a picture to see what cotton plants look like yes yeah, so it's not something that everyone it's just kind of what you're used to so um, okay I'm gonna go back to painting I'm gonna get distracted so what um, Ashley was just talking about I need to mention that to you guys too in celebration we are having the gifting of the supplies here if you sprinkle the video but also right now I am doing some special offers for the creative community that I've never offered before so one of them is if you're a monthly member and if you're not sure if you want to join or not you can join for seven days for free and just see what it's like. There's a seven day free trial and um, then you'll be charged your monthly fee afterwards. There's also a yearly option. You can pay yearly and you get two months for free if you do that. And then I just added this new lifetime um, option and what it is is you pay a one-time fee and then you don't get billed monthly. So I had 10 spots available and I was going to give it as a, at a discount for those first 10 people who sign up. You get $200 off and I've got 8 spots left for the lifetime membership. So I just wanted to let you guys know that. I'm going to stick a link in here and let you browse and see what the creative community is if you want to do that so you can see all those options they're all available okay so I've got my stems here I think I need to start putting in some white now I don't want to overthink this either so grab some white gonna have to come back in and work on this little stem part here I'll probably come back with my palette knife on those because that would make a really good texture there. Okay. Can 
you see that very well? I feel like something's missing over here, so I'm probably going to go in and let's just go ahead and do it. I'm going to put in some little leaves. They may not have anything to do with the actual cotton plant, but I think it will add something to it that will look just kind of like some background color. Let's add some yellow in there. that up some. Do that again here. See that's just adding so much to that painting. So in the past when I've painted cotton I didn't have a lot of things going on. It was just like a, just a piece of cotton. <laughs> and if you go back and watch that original tutorial from six years ago, um, that's, that's all we did was just one little piece of cotton. So I'm liking this a lot. I think I need something else right here. So we'll just do some of these down here too. And I don't want to do too much because I'm going to overdo it. That was one of the questions that was asked recently on our live video was how do you know when to stop because you tend to overwork things so right now I'm doing this in a camera and so I can see what I'm doing on the video and I can see that over here I need something um, but I can also see that I really like the way that this looks right here in the middle of this one and I'm probably not going to add anything else to the white and the purples and the blues on the actual pieces of cotton. But I am going to go in there and add some more depth with those stems. So taking a photo of what you're doing or if you're videoing yourself while you're doing it, that will help you to see when you need to stop. See, that's that's just enough right there I think for that so I need to darken some places in here and I think I'm gonna try this raw umber and see if that's gonna give me some extra darker value I'm gonna mix it a little bit with my burnt sienna That's gonna work. That's gonna work really well. Can you see that? It's already, it's already helping to bring it together. Let's just see what happens with my palette knife. So I'm going to grab some white and some Indian yellow. And pull that down here. And 
that's going to make a highlight with some texture. On that stem. I don't know if you can see that very well, but I really like the way that looks. So I'm going to keep going with this dark color. I'm just going to tap it and make some of those little curly areas. I don't know if you've ever seen cotton, but it has like a it's like a seed pod. It's like a pod that opens up and it's kind of hard and crunchy. I mean, it's dead by the time they pick, they pick it, but uh, actually they kill it and then pick it, but that's another story. Um, so I'm trying to create those little, those little pods. do that on this one too and then I'm gonna come back with my palette knife and add those highlights To give it a little more of a vintage look, I think I am going to add a little bit of some yellow ochre in some of these leaves. So that will that will be done in just a minute. Also, if you sprinkle the video, you will be in the running for this paintbrush set and my favorite palette knife. Those are my favorite tools. But also, to celebrate the creative community being here for six years, someone who is a creative community member, whether you join tonight or you've been there for the past six years, I'm going to choose one of you to get this painting. So, that is another fun part of our celebration. All right, I think I've got, let me put a little curly coming this way. I think I've got the darks in there. Um, Robin said the solid part holding the cotton fluff on the bowl looks like the seed pod on a rose of Sharon bush. Let's see. Did I get out? Yeah, here it is. Yellow ochre. Let's put a little bit of that in here. go back to this other brush that I had. And let's put a little white in there. Just kind of marble it. And let's see what it looks like if we make these more of a yellow. Like that. So we're gonna have a mixture of yellow leaves and this orangey color. So this whole thing is very fall decor looking. <laughs> it 
would fit in great with your fall decor is what I'm trying to say. When you're painting leaves, this is just a little side note, you're going to have, if you're just starting, you're going to have the temptation to paint them all exactly the same way. Same thing with your flowers or with your cotton bowls, just like these. Notice that I didn't turn them all in the same direction. And that is one thing that's going to help your painting to look more believable and more interesting. So if all of the leaves are pointing exactly the same direction in the same way, then it's going to start to look a little bit boring and you need to wiggle your brush around make those leaves have a little personality and then they'll be much more interesting okay so now I think I've got let me look at my camera I think I've got enough balance with um, maybe a little yellow in here And now I'm going to go back to my palette knife. Let's go with some of this yellow ochre and white. And I'm just going to get some on the very tip. And I'm looking, I may have to go back and add some more white because it does look like I could add a little more bright white, but going to do this, kind of make some of these areas stand out. And I may go back and cover some of this up. That's kind of the way my process works too. So if I'm looking at it and I think that looks too, too light, then I can just take my dark color and just go back over it. And I think I'm using a little bit too much of the yellow ochre and yellow ochre versus Indian yellow the yellow ochre is very opaque while the Indian yellow is more translucent so it's not going to cover quite as much and so I feel like I can make these highlights a little more easily using the Indian yellow. I'm probably gonna have to redo that little part right there. gonna drag this down and make some highlights on these what could be stems this right here that I don't like. Oops. So I just used way too much yellow ochre and it covered up too much of the dark. 
Okay. Let's add a little more white, and let's do that with a palette knife this time. Clean this off, because I want it to be a bright white now. extra bright white in there. You don't want to cover the whole thing because then you're going to take away all the depth and the shadows and the values that you've built up with all these layers. So you just want to put a little hint of that bright white, but not too much. I think I like <laughs> this much better than my very first painting of cotton. I'm going to show you. This is a fun thing to do. If you're painting water or flowers or whatever, you can use your palette knife and some white paint and make something that almost looks like sparkles. Um, I'm going to use it and try to make it sort of look like there's some some cotton in the background maybe back there you see that and you can't overdo it so you don't want to do it too much but it's a fun little something you can do to just add a little more texture or a little something there when you feel like it needs it. Okay. So, you guys, let's see what you're chatting about. Thank you, Peggy and Deborah. Trisha says, so happy to be getting in the CC. Um, George Ann says, what is your email for customer service? It is, I'll just type it in the chat here. It is art by Amanda Hilburn at Gmail. And you can, of course, email me anytime so there's our cotton six years later <laughs> and you know I may even I should have looked for the original painting because it may still be here somewhere in my studio I don't know um, let's see thank you Jane Thanks, Sandy. She says, this really has been so much fun to watch. I'm glad. Um, if you are a creative community member, this month we, of course, we have this tutorial. I don't know if you can see that back there. That one was last week. What we just did now, this is counting as part of your tutorial for this week. And then, of course, we had the workshop that lasted all week. Um, next week we're going to do a video or I'm going to do a video and um, it's going to be more of a mindset type lesson and then we will have our regular question and answer time at the end of the month 
So if you're not a creative community member and you would like to be one, this is a great time for you to join us. Um, we've got so much going on right now as far as different offers, different ways that you could become a member. Um, and we've been doing this for six years now. So all of the tutorials from the past six years are in the library and you can access them 24 hours a day, seven days a week if you're a member. Um, you also have access to a Facebook group where I go in, I answer your questions, other members talk to each other, get feedback from one another. I'm gonna scoot my chair down a little if it will let me. Um, and you can even request that I look at a painting that you're working on and give you some tips and help when you get stuck. Um, there's also a library that has business type videos and tutorials in it. It is, it is packed full of about 400 videos that you can choose from. You can search in the library. You can look in the library according to topics. So I've got things organized according to um, like all the landscapes are in one spot, all the portraits, all the flowers, all the workshops from the past are all in there. Also, my palette knife painting course is included and my new acrylic painting for beginners course is included. It's just the best option if you want to learn how to paint from me or if you want to um, just stay motivated as an artist then that is what the creative community is all about so I'm gonna look here I've got my laptop over here so I'm gonna look here and see if you guys are asking any questions that I could answer let's see Kim says, where do you buy your brushes and palette knife? Love this tutorial, loving the workshop. I am gonna show you this. This is what somebody is going to be gifted. And I just bought this today at Walmart. This is my favorite brush set. I know it's weird, but <laughs> it really is. I use these brushes all of the time. And this is my favorite palette knife. And it comes in just this pack of just one and they are at Michael's. Um, see, Linda is saying, how do I send stars? I have no idea, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, not seeing any other oh Christine says I started a procreate pattern with cotton and leaves like this love it oh that's cool you that's a good idea you could do that while um, you're on your tablet you could watch me and do that from from there digitally um, Sandy says this is certainly different from the other cotton you did before yes it is very different because I've grown myself over the past six years. If you paint on a regular basis, it, it's inevitable that you're going to change and you're going to get better and you're, you're going to get to know what you like so much better when you do it more often. And it's going to help you to eliminate things that you don't like. Um, much more easily <laughs> because you're gonna get you're gonna get used to painting a certain way and it's, it's I don't know how to explain it other than the more you do it the better it's going to be and it may be different in a lot of ways not just necessarily the colors that you use but the style of painting that you do is going to change too um, Kelly said, oh, hey, Kelly, will this live be available later? I 
can't believe I'm so late. I love the things you shared in the videos this week. Thank you very much. Yes, it will be available. It's going to stay here. It's going to be on my public Facebook page and also in our group. Um, hmm. Sammy says, I've used those brushes and I love them. They really are the best brushes to me. I don't know. It's, they're not too stiff and they're not too loose and they're just great. <laughs> and they're not... They're not very um, expensive. Let's see. Kim says, how much time do you commit to painting? Do you paint or create every day? You're a great instructor. Instructor, love your teaching style. Thank you very much. Um, I don't necessarily paint every day. Uh, I would like to, but no, I don't. And, but I do paint every week and as often as I can. Um, and it doesn't really take, it doesn't take a stressful amount of work to get better. It just takes consistency. So if you're consistently working on a painting or on you know practicing or your style or your your way of creating on a weekly basis I would say a weekly basis then you're gonna improve you're gonna make progress and it's gonna pay off but if you go for long periods of time where you don't paint anything or draw anything then you're gonna have to relearn some things but sometimes we just have seasons of our lives when we don't have the energy or the time or the health to continue to paint as much as we would like to. But just do it as much as you can is, is what I would say. Um, all right, I'm seeing some more comments, so let me get down here. Okay, Bobby says I have a question. All right, let's hear it. Um, in the meantime, Kellen says, "When did you start feeling comfortable painting live on social media?" <laughs> um, I've never felt comfortable painting live on social media. I mean, I can do it now without feeling nauseated, but when I first started doing this, I was terrified because I am a complete introvert don't like getting in front of people if you guys were here in person I would probably run and hide because I don't like this at all <laughs> I don't like being up in front of people but for some reason doing live videos has been easy for me after after the initial first few times I started doing it um, it got easier just because I kind of knew well I've done it before and everything turned out fine so I'll just I'll just keep going and do it again um, but Peggy says we would go find you <laughs> I would I would be hiding in a closet somewhere um, but not knowing what I'm gonna paint and getting started on something I was a little bit nervous when I first started this because I wasn't sure what I was gonna do but that also kind of challenges me and motivates me and makes it more fun. I don't know. Maybe I'm just kind of weird. But I like to do that now. And I think that a lot of times my live tutorials end up being better than my pre-recorded ones sometimes. Because I'm, I'm interacting with, with a real person or real people. And when you ask me questions, I can better answer and instruct because sometimes I don't know what you don't know. And something that just I just do kind of automatically, I can, can stop and think about and answer questions about when I'm live. And so when I think about it that way, and I think about that it's, it's going to help you if I do this on, on a live type thing then that motivates me a little bit more too. But as far as feeling comfortable, I don't know if I'm ever gonna 
feel comfortable. <laughs> um, Patricia says she had a question at the beginning. Okay, I'm sorry, I missed that. I don't know if it's going to let me scroll all the way back up. Let's see. Mm. Okay, Bobby says, do you have a tutorial on value? Oh, I have to go back up. Hang on. Well, okay. Painting something other than flowers. If not, could you paint something? Sure. I'm not sure if I do or not, you know? Now that you say that. Painting flowers, it's easy to teach value because you can kind of see it better in a flower or in my brain that's the help that's the way it works um but in landscapes in the tutorials that we've got in the the library on landscapes there should be some some value that is it may not be taught like here's the dark value here's the medium value but when we're painting those landscapes there's value there um, but if you don't, Bobby, if you go back into the library and you don't see anything in the landscapes topics that would help you with value, let me know. Um, okay, let's see. Thank you, Peggy. That's very sweet. Robin says, I think your lives are more informal and helpful taped are great to go back for painting along later thank you very much Jane um, Kellen said there's also value in your birds and other paintings too okay so it may not be labeled as a tutorial about value but there should be some help with value in most every painting that there's a tutorial, especially the more recent ones. Donna says, I love that you focus on florals. I tried to paint for years and finally had success when I bought a floral lesson from you. That's great. I love painting florals. Um, I know I saw something else. Hang on. Thank you all for the encouraging comments. Sammy says, I didn't paint for months after I became the 100% caregiver for my mom. Caregiving was all I could manage in this season. Last week, I decided it was time to pick up my brush again. I feel so much better. That is awesome. I love that. And yeah, there's sometimes when we're, we're just not going to be able to be creative or as often as we would like to or at all. And you may have to just take a break. And that's okay. Let's see. Um, Bobby said maybe I should go back to the painting one flower again. Maybe so. Um, if you paint the flowers and where I'm teaching value, you should be able to, to use, even though you're not, you won't be painting a flower later, you should be able to use what you're learning in a tutorial about a flower and apply some of the same skills to another subject. Donna says the pear tutorial. Yeah, that would help with value also, definitely. Thank you, Peggy. She says, talk about value. Becoming a member of the CC group that Amanda has is such an amazing value. You will be so blessed to join. I appreciate that very much. Kelly says, what is the best beginner class to start with that you offer? I just made a course that's called Acrylic Painting for Beginners. And that is where, even if you join the uh, membership that's where I suggest that you begin once you get in there so 
I have lots of tutorials that are available on my website, but I have two courses. So a course has multiple videos and things in it. And the acrylic painting for beginners course would be where I would begin. So you could either purchase that individually at $97 or it's included in the creative community and it's $50 a month. Um, Donna says, is your website where we go to join? Yes, I just posted, let me see if I can reply and just give you that link. That's where the, the memberships are. Anything that has to do with classes on my website are under the at the top there's a little like a little menu that says shop learn blog blah 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 so under shop that's where you can buy my paintings but under learn that's where all of my classes are so individual classes the two courses that i offer and the membership are all there okay anyone else have any questions um, Norma says this is beautiful I lost your comment hang on it keeps moving too fast for me my cotton looks like cake pops and that is very similar to what my cotton looked like in that first tutorial over in the creative community the very first one but that doesn't mean that one is good and one is bad the one that I did before was just done with totally done with the palette knife done with a different kind of color palette um, but that doesn't mean that it was wrong I don't want to make it sound like that either so cotton kind of does look like cake pops <laughs> to be honest so don't don't be too hard on yourself. Um, I'm sorry, Patricia. I can't scroll back up. Is it possible that you could retype your question? Um, it won't. For some reason, when I'm when I'm live, I can't go past a certain area to go back up. Let's see. Kathy said that would be me, a beginner, and love your flowers. Thank you very much. So there's lots of, that's another thing that I didn't say about the creative community is this, it is organized by topic, but it's also organized according to skill level. So when I put out a new tutorial of any kind, it will be tagged with beginner, intermediate, or advanced. And you can go in and just go through all the beginner lessons and then go through all the intermediate lessons and then move on to the more advanced lessons if you want to do that. Um, and it's also, you know what, I don't even have this in here and I should have done this. There is something that I have available. It's over on my blog, but let me grab it real quick. It's something called the Artist Flight Path. So if you're new to me, you've probably never seen this before, but if you're not, you probably have seen it before. And it is it's sort of like a, a little guide that helps you to see where you fit in as far as the beginner, intermediate, and advanced. Um, let me grab this. not showing up it's inside the creative community number one you can take an assessment and it will tell you whether you are at the um, parrot level or the sparrow level or the hummingbird level or the bluebird level and yes Georgian said I think of it as an orientation that is a very good way to think about it um, 
it I just ask a few questions and it says things like if you are taking just step-by-step -step lessons you need help with the basics and you would go into this level and then after I I'm having a really hard time explaining this <laughs> I shouldn't have after I do a tutorial in the creative community and I post it in our library underneath that tutorial there's going to be a little something for every bird level to take away from the lesson so let's say it's a beginner lesson and I'm teaching how to paint cotton so after the tutorial video is finished then you can scroll down below it and it may say if you are a, at the parrot level then just enjoy painting the step-by-step -step lesson along with me if you are in the sparrow level then I give you some suggestions because sparrows are they're getting a little bit bored with just doing it step by step and they want to do a little more they want to be able to make their own choices and just experiment with things <clears throat> So I may say for the sparrows, try painting this in a different color palette. Try using a knife instead of a brush, things like that. And then I would suggest to the hummingbirds who are the ones who are confident with painting and they're ready to find their own way of creating their own style, their own colors. They wanna do it their own way. And so I may suggest to them take some of the techniques that we learned in this tutorial, turn them around, change them, um, make it your own, whatever, I'm trying to think. I may say, use your color palette that is your style, or use the technique that you like best and make this your own. And then the bluebird level, you guys who are bluebirds are confident you know what your style is, you are ready to sell your artwork, and I will give suggestions that may be more business related or something to that nature. Um, but Georgianne, that's a great way to put it. It's like an orientation and it helps you to see how you can move to the next level, really, using the tutorials that are all there. So. Let me look one more time and see if I can find it on my website. Because I used to have it here for free for everybody. The Artist Light Path. And if it's not, then I know Okay, here it is. I'm going to share it with you guys. I usually ask for an email address, but I'm just going to send you straight over there to it, and that way you can download it and use it if you would like to. Um, Bobby said she loved the ink and stick tutorial. It was so much fun. That was a fun one. Patricia, I'm so sorry that I can't see your question. Uh, can someone else see Patricia's question and let me know what it was that she was asking about? Let me see. Because I do not see it. If you want to try to copy and paste it, maybe. But nope, I can't go up that far. I don't know why. Um, but this was a lot of fun, and I am going to Let's see, what time is it? Oh, wow. We've been going for a while now. Ashley said I tried to scroll up, but it won't let me see comments. Me either. I know it's so weird. It won't let us go back up. I don't know if Patricia's still here, but if you are, I'll be watching, and you can 
retype your question. I'll do my best to answer it. Um, so, to recap, this is our six year anniversary for the creative community this month. And all month, I am going to do this special seven day free trial. So, if you want to, if you're not sure if you want to join or not, and you think you may like it, um, you can join for seven days for free. Look around, see what you think about it. Um, and also, if you know that you want to, <laughs> you want to be a member, you could join the yearly option and get two months for free. Um, or maybe you've been here for a while or you've been here for a little while and you know that you want lifetime membership i have an option for that this month also in the first 10 spots we'll get 200 dollars off that lifetime subscription um and there are eight of those spots left now that i'm aware of before i started the video anyway so I'm very excited that you guys are here. Those of you who have been here with me for so long, I appreciate you so much. Um, you have no idea how much you help me and my family. And those of you who have sprinkled this video, I will go back and take a look and choose someone randomly to get this brush pack and my favorite brushes and my favorite palette knife. And I will just send you um, a messenger message if you are the lucky person. And also, I'm going to choose one of my creative community members to gift this painting to. So, um, if you, I'm going to do that tomorrow. So, if you join tonight, then you will be in the list of, of members that will get someone will get randomly chosen okay let's see um i thought i saw it okay robin said i think patricia asked the difference in yellow ochre and indian yellow okay maybe that's what it was yellow ochre and indian yellow that's what we're looking at here the yellow ochre is more of a, a flat, opaque paint. So, like, if I don't know if you've ever noticed, but when you, um, when you paint and you mix titanium white with your paint, whatever color it may be, it's going to make it more opaque, like you can't see through it. And yellow ochre is like that also. Some paints are more opaque and some are more translucent. The Indian yellow is much more translucent. You can see through it. So it works better. Um, it works as a wash really well. Um, you could also use it thin down, put it completely over a painting and make it look like it's got like a, a yellow filter on it. So, but if you tried to do that with the yellow ochre, it would cover a lot of things. So, I hope that makes sense. And I hope that is what you asked, because I got that one answered. <laughs> but, thank you all for being here. Thank you for um, spending a week with me in the workshop. I hope you guys have learned some things and have benefited from that. Um, let's see. I think I've answered all the questions that were asked tonight and I believe that was all that we were going to cover. You're welcome, Kim. And if you have any questions about any of my classes or anything on my website, I'll be happy to help with that um you're very welcome everyone who's saying thank you and you can just leave a comment here and it usually gives me a little alert on facebook when someone comments 
But um, if there aren't any other questions, then I don't think I have anything else. But thanks for joining me to celebrate and paint cotton again. And hopefully we'll, we'll keep going for another six years. Who knows? <laughs> um, but you guys have, have a great weekend and I will see you next time. Bye.